Now under the car, I'm gonna remove the uh, sway bar end links, gonna remove the rear sway bar, probably gonna remove this little plastic piece, and then the heat shield covering the drive shaft. I'm gonna take this one off too, just for access purposes. access the mounts for the sway bars. this just so we match this up perfectly when we come back under here we're also going to loosen the support for the drive shaft down there and that'll just give us some wiggle room so we can drop this down first we're going to move remove the z1 rear diff brace for 14s Just gives us a little additional clearance for the rear diff as it comes down. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, but the speed sensors are up in here. They're a little bit difficult to get to like this. Uh, we could probably get one in there, but there is a vent line up there as well on the top side. So I think we want to try to lower it down, maybe even before we pull the axles out. I'd love to be able to pull the axles out without moving, without removing this, like, you know, the rear hub assembly. Just gonna try to go ahead and get these speed sensors out now. <laughs> 12, 12 millimeter by the way. Now that we're getting to the point where we wanna start pulling these axles out, I wanna make sure we drain the rear diff. Uh, so we're dealing with as little fluid and as little mess as possible. Go ahead and plug this up again, just leave this in the car. We got it pretty well drained. I just loosen those nuts holding the drive shaft bracket um, down to just about the very end, just to give me some wiggle room. Now I'm going to make a mark, got a silver marker that I'll use. Uh, if, if this doesn't work, I'll use some, a pen, or a, sorry, some paint. I just wanna make sure this gets put back exactly how it is installed from the factory. These are 17s, by the way. These are 17s. I'm just going to loosen them a little bit and see what we got going on. at 19 up in here. Need a little bit of a swivel. It's gonna hit the trunk floor. Hopefully I can break it loose. Guess now, finish dropping these. So looking 
at our spare diff here, you can see this vent line is on the passenger side. So you can see that vent line right there. Um, I can get my hand up there and slide that off. We should be golden to drop this thing and maybe these, we'll get lucky and the axles will pop out. Let's see here. Oh, easy. There it is. Trying to be careful. Oh, I wish you guys would have seen it, but I got it. Just had to do some wiggling. Make sure these C clips are on. The bottoms, both are on. I don't know how we force those in later on, but son of a. It really just had to get my hands in there as you can see and jiggle it try to pull this back as much as it would go and it helps having this loose but you need you do need a jack something to support it a second set of hands would be great uh, but as you get this one out and you kind of low, lower it down the other one just kind of automatically pulls out by itself so not too bad hopefully it's easier to get back in than it is to get out son of a gun Gotta disassemble the rear diff. I wanted to paint the cover black, but now looking at it, I decided I wanted to paint it silver. But I don't have any silver paint, so I guess we're not painting it. These are 19s, four large 19s, and then six smaller uh, 12s. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. Instead, everything you could get. These are already loose because we took the brace off, of course. Be careful because we want to leave everything in place so we make sure we know exactly where everything goes. Just looking at these seals, they are flush with that inside edge. That's one thing I wanted to make note of. And then you can see these little ears or little tabs on each side of the rear diff. Just put a little screwdriver or something there, flathead and just tap it with a mallet and the cover will pop off. Let's do it. Just a little bit of fluid down there on the bottom. Everything else looks nice. Um, Rish, I could use that carrier, but we have the LSD kit in the used one. This one has fewer miles, but you know, it just got some weather on it, so that's unfortunate. But I think we are going to use the factory diff housing itself and not go with the used one. Just because I don't know what has fallen back in the, the bearings or that pinion gear back there. This is just all fresh, of course. So what we have to do is swap the ring gear. You won't have to worry about this because your LSD kit will likely be in your factory uh, carrier. But since I was going to use the used one, we have it already uh, assembled here. But what's important, and uh, shout out again to Four Door Will on IG. Um, he, he, if I wasn't clear, he pointed out in that last video to make sure that you're matching the, the ring gear with the pinion gear. That is a, a married set, right? So this ring gear and that pinion gear in the back of the diff, or I guess it'd be the front, uh, those are mated together, so you don't want to you don't want to mix and match these. So we're gonna have to swap this ring gear onto this carrier. A little tappy tap. This one off. Put 
put this one on to this carrier. If you have to do this, this is a 17, by the way. Set that one aside so we don't get confusion. Should put some anti-seize. Should clean this all up and then put some anti-seize in the holes. That's what the instructions suggest. got everything lined up put back in do these in a crisscross pattern of course just like your wheels just tap these down I think you need to do 56 or 58 foot pounds of torque and then you do 31 to 36 degrees crank down. So I need a couple tools to do that. I'll get my torque wrench down. I've done this before, so uh, check that video out. My uh, prepping the Q50 rear diff for uh, LSD. I got the carrier back in the housing. The shims are in, everything looks good. It, I was spinning it, it spins freely. The teeth line up perfectly. No binding, no weird noises, no grinding, nothing like that. So we should be in good shape. I just wanna make sure the surface is completely clean and grease free. We're doing it for the diff cover as well. Uh, I got some Permatex gasket maker that is sort of specifically for rear diffs. Uh, rear diff gear oil can be a little bit uh, funky when it comes to different adhesives so you want to make sure you get the right one this is the one that I saw recommended online so that's what we went with I'll put a link to the description in the description to uh, this particular one on Amazon so you can get it yourself um, but just gonna scrape all this glue and stuff off of here and then we'll use some uh, brake cleaner just make sure everything is free of oils and we'll put a bead on there and then uh, you put a bead on you squeeze it down a little bit with the bolts so it starts to ooze uh, and basically spread out and then you have to let it sit for an hour then torque everything down then you have to wait like 24 hours before you can add oil to it just to make sure it has a good uh, proper dried up seal is to apply a sixteenth to a quarter of an inch bead that's a pretty big bead continuous bead around each of the bolt holes so that's what I'm gonna do Doesn't look great, but I've seen people lather it on here and then smear it all around, so hopefully this seals up. Tighten these down too far, I'm gonna slide the seals in. Just flush. But everything's torqued down now. Got a nice little bead squeezed out. Hopefully everything's sealed up. I just took this off of ice so I can Rotate this just to see if I hear any weird noises. I'd hate to have the thing installed in the car and then we get some binding. So I'm just kind of feeling it out. Listen.
got most of the stuff put back in the car and buttoned up. Sway bars in, uh, rear end is in, axles pushed in not too bad, a lot easier than I thought they were going to. The drive shaft is back in, torque down. Uh, to get it back up in here, you have to take the bracket all the way off and let it kind of, and let it bend in the middle. Then you can get it on this little post and then push the bracket back up and it'll slide it in. And then once you torque these down, of course, it pulls everything tight. Our line's lined up. I'm not sure that that actually matters, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, Z1 bushings are in. So um, we're still waiting for the, uh, the sealer to cure for 24 hours. So I'm gonna wait till later this evening to put uh, some rear diff fluid in. We, got, we went with Royal Purple 75W90 uh, just because I couldn't, I can't wait for Multool to come in when I order it. It's gonna take a few days. So uh, we'll do sort of a little break-in period with the LSD conversion kit, and then we'll drain it and put some Motul in there because that's what I prefer, but we'll see how this Royal Purple, purple works. Um, other than that, uh, the everything seemed to turn freely no weird noises or anything once I got the axle straight um, So looking forward to test it out. And well guys, I gotta say that this is not the easiest installation, but It should make a massive difference in how this Q50 performs So it's going to be worth it in the end a little bit of work some dirty hands a little bit of patience I think you can handle it. Uh, I'm not a mechanic not a professional. So this is just how I installed this kit or went through the process again check out traction concepts website to get a little bit of a tutorial on how to install the actual uh, conversion kit into your rear diff um, ask them if you have any questions leave any questions down in the comment section below I'll try to help you as best I can but going to the professionals is is key thank you guys very much for the continued support thank you again to traction concepts for partnering with me for this series of videos stay tuned we got a full review a full lineup of testing videos and I think you're going to enjoy it and I I think I'm going to enjoy this Q50 even more now. So thank you guys again for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.